first Nissan Qashqai went on sale back in 2007, it proved immensely popular, with consumers quickly snapping up what was the first compact crossover on the market. However, nowadays, it's not the pioneer anymore, with pretty much every manufacturer bringing their own crossover to the segment. Can the Qashqai stay on top? Let's find out. This latest incarnation of the Qashqai is sharper than ever, with sleek headlights up front framing a narrow, sporty grille. It's still recognisable as a Qashqai though, standing out in brighter colours. However, darker ones do tend to wash it out a little bit. You've got the option of either a 1.2 litre petrol or a 1.6 litre petrol engine, while there's also the choice of a 1.5 and 1.6 litre diesel. These are driven through either a six-speed manual or CVT gearbox. The interior of the Qashqai has been designed with families in mind, which means that though it's functional, there are a lot of harder plastics dotted throughout the cabin. It's been brightened up with chrome plastics along the air vents and across the steering wheel though. This infotainment system, however, feels just a little outdated compared to rivals and doesn't offer the responsiveness nor the ease of use that you'd expect from a car on sale today. There's 430 litres of boot space to be found in the back of the Qashqai, which means there's more than enough room for a weekly shop. It's worth remembering that Tecna and Tecna Plus specifications have a smaller 401 litre of boot as a result of a subwoofer being fitted in there. Now, the reason why the first Qashqai was so popular was because it combined a relatively compact size with a high riding driving position, which inspires confidence in the people who do get behind the wheel. And thankfully, that's the case with this latest one. You've got a great view of the road ahead, and that means you do feel relatively in control of what you're doing rather than sitting low and feeling slightly alienated from the whole driving experience. Now, the car we're driving today uses a 1.6 litre petrol engine, and that's linked to a six speed manual. Now, that gearbox has a relatively nice throw, though it is quite long, which makes you feel like you're doing an awful lot of work when you're changing gear. The engine itself isn't too bad, it's quite smooth and revs quite freely though in truth if you're going to be travelling longer miles we'd opt for one of the larger diesels as it'll just prove better on economy and it'll be better when you've got the car fully loaded with the kids and other stuff like that. Now one thing we would point out is that the car we're in today is riding on optional 19 inch alloy wheels. What does that do to the ride? Well it doesn't improve things, it makes it really quite crashy over poor surfaces and it actually generates quite a lot of road noise even when you're travelling at moderate speeds. Now, how do you combat that? Well, you fit a smaller wheel. There's a 17 or an 18 inch option, and both of those will make the ride a lot more comfortable and a lot quieter, especially when traveling on the motorway. This latest Nissan Qashqai is still a very well-rounded compact crossover. It's good to look at, it's well-made, and it's extremely practical too. However, an outdated infotainment system as well as some harsher plastics do tend to put it behind current rivals. That said, for the money, you'd do well to pick the Nissan Qashqai.